up until that moment, most of us would say Donovan was a normal kid. He was like a brother to me, like we were born together, super close. 911, where's your emergency? To brutally attack someone who loved you and cared for you is just beyond me. On an unseasonably cool April afternoon in 2017, 14-year-old Donovan Nicholas committed an act so heinous that it not only upended his life, but ended another and impacted the lives of many more. I just killed my mother. It wasn't his mother he killed, but his father's live-in girlfriend, 40-year-old Heidi Faye Taylor, who'd helped raise him since he was a toddler. It was a long and bloody struggle, beginning in the front area of the home. The struggle continued on into a dining room area and then eventually into the kitchen. The victim struggled up the back staircase of the home into the master bedroom where she was eventually stopped from calling for help by the defendant who then got a handgun out and finished the victim off. I met Heidi in December of 2003. We were fast friends. She was a single mom, I was a single mom, and she had an infectious laugh. And she was just so personable. Living in a bustling two-story farmhouse in Urbana, Ohio in 2017, Heidi and her boyfriend Shane had blended their families. Shane had one son, Donovan, while Heidi had two children from previous relationships. 21-year-old Alyssa and 19-year-old Todd. Donovan, the youngest, was the only child living at home. It was fun. Me, Donovan, we'd go ride in the woods and just do stupid teenage things, and it was never a dull moment. Heidi was a little ordinary thing. She was no bigger than a minute. She pushed her children for excellence, and Alyssa was always very smart academically, and so was Donovan. I mean, he did great in school up until the last year or so. I don't really have the the knowledge or the understanding of what it was like behind closed doors when I wasn't there. He was a sweet kid, you know? I mean, every now and again, you had to get firm with him, but nothing real great. There were little comments that, you know, if anything were to happen to her, you know, one of these days, he's gonna kill her. But I don't think that she meant it literally. On the day of the attack, Angie, who was staying at the house, watched as Heidi reprimanded Donovan after he was caught sending over sexually explicit text messages. She was like, you know what I caught him doing today? <laughs> and she goes on to tell me how he's grounded until his dad gets there. And she didn't want to hear another word about it. It wasn't me who, who, it wasn't me who killed her. It was Jeff. Jeff was Jeff the killer, an alternate personality based on an internet character that Donovan claimed emerged in the months before the murder. On the witness stand, Donovan told the jury that when Jeff came out, so to say, he put on his clothes and then he got his knife. I think it was abundantly clear that one, he was severely mentally ill, um, and two, that that illness was consistent with dissociative identity disorder. Dissociative identity disorder is when an individual has two or more separate personalities that control a person's behavior at different times. This wasn't something where overnight he experienced this alternate personality. It was um, a course of several months and maybe up to a year that he was getting significantly more and more mentally ill. And there were Donovan's attorneys, Catherine Sato and Tim Hackett, did not represent him at trial both joining the case after his conviction. At trial, Donovan's attorney submitted numerous text messages he exchanged with a school friend before the attack in an attempt to demonstrate Donovan dealing with another personality. During one chat about committing murder, Donovan told his friend that, quote, I would be Jeff the killer. And a psychologist had testified that they believed Donovan had dissociative identity disorder, but could be rehabilitated if given the proper care while in custody. My personal opinion is that Donovan was a catered child, as in he got just about everything he wanted. And uh, he did not like to be told no. And I think that he got a burst of real anger in puberty. Our emotions are heightened. And, uh, and I think he just got mad because he wasn't getting his own way. 
I don't see how a person can come back from that and be a good person. So if he if he does and he he gets a little piece of paper saying he's rehabilitated or however that works, as far as I'm concerned, that it's just stuff to start a fire. It means nothing to me. Donovan, whose case started in juvenile court and was later transferred to adult court, received a sentence of life in prison with the possibility of parole after 28 years. I would say that the vast majority of cases that are that are bound over to the adult system are of 17 year olds. I think 14 year olds that are being transferred are really an outlier. Donovan appealed, arguing he never should have been transferred out of juvenile court and his case found its way up to the Ohio Supreme Court, which issued its ruling in 2022. The Supreme Court eventually reversed and remanded the case back to juvenile court, but did not do so until the juvenile was nearly 21 years of age. And by the time the Supreme Court issued its decision, um, the juvenile justice system had a matter of weeks Uh, to address this juvenile's behavior and to have him sanctioned and rehabilitated through the juvenile system. Donovan was released from the Ohio Department of Youth Services on July 9th, his 21st birthday, the age at which Ohio juvenile courts lose jurisdiction. You think you're going to get justice for your family and your mom, and then guess who gets to walk away? I feel that it is a misjustice. Um, and, and and the I'm appalled. There to drive Donovan home after he was released was Heidi's son, Todd, with Shane, Donovan's father, in the passenger seat. He was in the back with a box of his stuff from prison. It was very quiet. He didn't didn't say a word. I looked at him in my rearview mirror, and I was like, if I hear your name in any negative way. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen because I don't exactly know, but just know I don't want to hear your name unless it's for getting citizen of the year. He told me he understood. He assured me that he's going to keep going to counseling. He's going to keep seeing doctors and stuff and slowly try to get his life together. And he says he hopes one day that we can put this behind us. And then he started crying. I was like, I took, it's like, it'll never happen. It's like, I'm sorry. As much as I love you and as much as I care about you, it's never going to happen. Despite the family's sentiment, Kim Jordan, who supported Donovan's appeal, still sees a way out for someone like him. I think we're all more than the worst thing that we've ever done. Um, And that holds true for kids who do terrible things. Not every kid is going to be a success story, but they deserve the opportunity to be a success story. He did receive mental health treatment during his stay in prison. Uh, He is stable right now, and he has not engaged in any other violent incidents whatsoever, either in the juvenile detention center or in the adult prison uh, during these past six years. The whole family gets together, family, friends. We usually cook our favorite food. We'll have lasagna, we'll have, and it's all homemade. So we'll all get together, we'll all have a few beers and just hang out, pass stories around and just have fun in her name. Sometimes it's just as I'm driving down the road. I can just imagine her sitting in my passenger seat with her little foot up. (laughs) Just giving me what for. We had this future in our minds and it was taken, all of us did. Um, But I'm thankful to have known her and I'm a better person because of her.